So, this is a video that's supposed to be about Tyler Mott, but we cannot ignore what is going on with the Vancouver Canucks right now. They're going to play the Florida Panthers once again tomorrow in a Vancouver Canucks building that is probably going to be at 50% capacity, something like that. And when it comes to the personnel that the Canucks are going to throw out there onto the ice, I'm personally not really too sure how confident I am in their abilities. Why? Well, firstly, we still have Bo Horvat out. Connor Garland, I'm not really too sure when his timeline for return is going to be completed. But, Thatcher Demko and JT Miller both tested positive today. And now, we have ourselves Spencer Martin, who has been very good for the Abbotsford Canucks, Maybe suiting up for the team tomorrow, I'm not really too sure what's up with Yaroslav Halak and when his timeline of return is going to be fulfilled, but Halak out, Demko out, AHL goaltender inbound, no Bo, no Garland, no Miller, this team is, for all intents and purposes, screwed. And I hate to say it, but I kind of have to. So let's go over to our main topic of today's video that is somebody who is in the lineup, somebody who is probably going to play tomorrow, and somebody who has been on a heater as of late. Let's talk about Tyler Mott. Now, the entire conversation we're going over revolving around Mott was sparked up because Elliot Friedman said that he had heard Tyler Mott's name in trade rumors earlier this week. Now, why is Mott in the trade rumor side of things? Why are people discussing the idea of a Tyler Mott trade? Well, because Tyler Mott is a 20 six year old 5'10", 192 pound center winger who's got a very good work ethic, very good wheels, he's got super hard determination, and he's always going. He's one of the better players that the Vancouver Canucks have in their bottom six, and he's making $1.225 million a season until the end of this year. He is an expiring UFA. And when it comes to players who are expiring UFAs on teams that are not really supposed to be playoff contenders, there are conversations to go around as to whether or not you should, could, or would trade these players for draft picks and all that stuff, so they can become rentals for other teams at the trade deadline. Tyler Mott is now in that conversation, despite the fact that this season he's gone out there with some pretty good highlights. Now, his overall metric of 8 points in 24 games played isn't really super significant. I mean, it's very similar to the previous set of numbers that he has had. 9 points in 24 games last season, 8 points in 34 games in the previous year, 5 points in 17 games in the bubble playoffs, though, where he absolutely came alive and scored some really clutch goals. Mott, though, this season, if you do the math, 8 divvy 24 multiplied out by 82. Mott is on pace for 27 points, which, for a bottom 6 guy who plays the way that Mott does, I think is perfectly acceptable because it's combined with his two-way ability, his work ethic, his board battle tendencies, and his level of surprise, I'm going to say. Because Tyler Mott does a lot of things that you kind of expect Tyler Mott to do that not a lot of other players on this team can do. He does all the dirty work, he gets the team involved, he forechecks really hard, but once in a while he'll bust out a move or two that makes you go, what the hell, Tyler Mott did that? The through the legs goal, I think, is the one that everybody thinks about right away. But Mott, to his credit, has gone out there with four points in his last five games and five points in his last ten, which is kind of why this trade conversation that we're having that Friedman brought up initially is starting to pick up some more steam. Okay, Tyler Mott has been scoring goals. Tyler Mott has been making plays. Tyler Mott has been demonstrating his value. It's like the Dennis system right here. And now Friedman is saying that his name has entered trade talks. Do you go out there and try to trade Tyler Mott to a playoff team, assuming the return could be somewhere in the realm of, I don't know, a second or a good prospect or maybe even a first if it's a good team he's going to? Jim Rutherford really likes Tyler Mott. This is the quote that Rick Dollywall shared the other day. I like him. I like that line. Good energy and speed and Mott is a big part of that. And so when it comes to Tyler Mott, if the GM likes him, then do you re-sign him? If he's involved in trade talks, do you trade this guy away and you try to get him back in the offseason? Tyler Mott is in a pretty interesting spot right now, as the Vancouver Canucks are technically not all too great of a team. However, in my opinion, if you want to go out there and project the future of what you should do with the Mott, it kind of depends. And I think this is where the trade deadline being super far away, I mean, we have ourselves like a month or two before the trade deadline comes around, that is ultimately what we're going to need to decide whether or not to trade him on, in my opinion at least. The Vancouver Canucks right now are, what, they're sixth in the Pacific Division? They're three points behind Calgary, 
and five behind San Jose, six behind LA and Anaheim. And so the playoff race is a pretty far means away if you want to go out there and say the Canucks have themselves a chance at competing. This Miller and Demko thing being true, assuming they don't test negative again or in multiple successive tests, is a really big deal. And if you wanted to say that the Vancouver Canucks in their next stretch of games over here are going to need to go out there and start stringing together wins, doing it without Demko and Miller is going to be very tough. And in my opinion, if you wanted to go out there and say the Canucks had any fighting shot of making the playoffs after Bruce Boudreaux came onto the squad... Those odds of success just got a lot more diminished with the absence of Demko and Miller. So, who knows if this Demko-Miller thing is enough to derail the entire playoff push. But, one thing it says to me is that if the Canucks start end up losing games, and they start not really doing all too well, and they start faltering again because they don't have their star power up top, no captain, no Demko, no JT... If they're in a position where by the time February, mid-February, late February rolls around, I think then you could start to say, okay, well, we're in too deep. And we're trying to keep up above in our heads instead of going under, but sugar, we're going down. This playoff hunt is out of reach. And then I think it would start to be more appropriate to think about trading a Tyler Mott rather than re-signing him. Because I'll set the record straight right here. Should the Canucks go out there tomorrow and re-sign Tyler Mott to an extension that is less than, let's say, $1.3, $1.5 million AAV, I'd be okay with that. Like, I'd like Tyler Mott enough to keep him around and have him progress with this team. He's only 26 years old. Like, he's younger than JT Miller. So, there is indeed a long-term projectability of players like Tyler Mott in this hockey league, and he's a fan favorite for a reason, but... It's really going to depend on the price, right? Like, if there's a team willing to pay a first-round pick for Tyler Mott, like, honestly, I kind of think about that and I say, darn. When the Canucks initially acquired Tyler Mott, this was the Thomas Vanek trade back in 2018, and they traded away Thomas Vanek for, what was it, UC Jokinen, or was it Oli Jokinen? No, it was UC. UC Jokinen, right. And Tyler Mott, and everybody was pissed off that Vanek, who at the time was really much helping Brock Besser settle into the NHL and become an absolute powerhouse, Vanek did not fetch the Canucks a first, and that was the big thing four years ago that everybody was freaking out about. If in some weird turn of events, the return that Vanek got for Vancouver turned into a first-round pick four years later, then I kind of like the sound of that. It's kind of poetic in a way. I don't know about you. I don't really know if Tyler Mott is good enough to get a first, but I mean, Barclay Goodrow fetched a first, so did Blake Coleman. If they go to Tampa Bay, they're going to get first-round picks in return, so... Just trade Tyler to Tampa, eh? That's why he scored that through-the-legs goal against Tampa, right? Showing off in front of a hometown Tampa crowd what he can do for your hockey team and just what skills he can pull out of his hat. Talk to me in the comments what do you think about the idea of trading Tyler Mott. Also talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Canucks and their game tomorrow because Demko and Miller, if these guys are out and we have Spencer Martin playing and Justin Dowling playing and all the other guys playing, it's gonna be... Oh boy, I don't know how it's going to be. Are they going to do well? I'm not really too sure. I mean, if you still don't have Garland and Horvat too, that's ultimately a killer, isn't it? All killer, no filler over here in Vancouver. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Canucks, Tyler Mott, and all that. One more thing as well, if you're a fan of any other team and you're watching this video for some reason, like I don't really know why anybody else would watch a Vancouver Canucks-centric related video, but I know it happens. So thank you very much for sticking around if you are indeed a fan of somebody else and you're not watching a video that's dedicated towards your own team, would you want a Tyler Mott? Like, I personally would if I'm a fan of any other team because I like Tyler Mott enough to say that. But from the outside, if you are somebody who is not a Canucks fan, you're like, okay, well, we kind of, I don't know, we're in the middle of a playoff hunt or whatever. Would you see value in a player like Tyler Mott heading over to your team? And if so, what is the most you'd be willing to pay for this guy? For me, it's probably a second. It's maybe a B-tier prospect. It's not a first, but... If any other GM is going out there thinking a first is what it takes, then be my guest. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about this video. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.